Um, and we are also going to just talk a little bit about um, cancer. So <clears throat> the pancreas is um, an accessory organ that is going to allow us to continue to digest most of our food in the small intestines. Um, the location, it, it is attached basically to the duodenum and the greater curvature of the stomach. Now it does have, um, it is considered to be a gland, so it has an exocrine function, but it also has an endocrine fu function, if you remember the difference. So exocrine glands have ducts, endocrine glands do not have ducts. So this one actually functions as both. It has um, an exocrine function, which is its digestive system function, and it secretes something called pancreatic juice. And all that is is a, a conglomerate of uh, enzymes that are going to be um, spewed into the duodenum to finish up all of the digestion um, of the remaining food so that we can absorb all of the nutrients. Now it does also have a an endocrine function and you guys have probably heard of insulin. Um, you know people with diabetes their um, pancreas isn't functioning correctly because they're not um, forming the right amount of insulin and glucagon and both of these are there to regulate uh, blood glucose levels. So digestion, I talked to you about this a couple of lectures ago, digestion in the small intestine. So we have a duodenum and the duodenum is attached directly to the stomach. And we need to make sure that the chyme that is coming out of the stomach isn't too acidic for the uh, duodenum because it doesn't have that bicarbonate rich mucosal lining. So when chyme enters the duodenum, it has to be neutralized. And so as it's neutralized, then it's going to come in, um, it's going to be regulated in the amount that will go into the duodenum at a time. And at this point, we have only started to um, break down carbohydrates with amylase in the mouth and proteins with pepsin in the um, stomach. And so no fat digestion has taken place. So when the chyme is released slowly into the duodenum, um, we end up right at the duodenum. This is when we're going to allow for the um, pancreatic juices to be spewed in and also bile. Um, if you can remember, bile emulsifies fats. So we are going to digest, um, th that's what this uh, bullet is saying. So we're going to further digest the stuff that is produced in the liver and the pancreas. Um, and virtually all of the nutrient absorption takes place in those villi and microvilli. Um, and most of our water absorption happens at this uh, point. In the large intestine, the large intestine is subdivided into a couple of different parts. So we start off with a cecum. And the cecum is where the ileum of the small intestine is going to attach to the large intestine. And the cecum is just a pocket. And uh, you guys are going to see this in the cat. And so you, you are looking at the cecum. And right on the tip of the cecum, we have something called an appendix. Um, it's called an aviviform appendix. And it is considered to be um, a vestigial structure, which has no function for the human body. They do now think that it has a little bit of a function, um, but it doesn't have much of a function. And then we have four parts to the colon. Basically, your large intestine is almost all colon. And so we have um, a part that's going to go up the side, the, the right side of the body. It's called the ascending colon. Then we have a transverse colon that goes across, um, kind of through the middle, above the small intestines. Then we have a trans, or I'm sorry, a descending um, colon that is going down on the left side, then a sigmoid colon. And then finally it goes into the rectum and the anal canal, and then the feces will be removed. Now the large intestines really just is a waste uh, mover, but there, there are a couple of things that are happening in uh, the large intestines. So basically no further um, digestion takes place except for you do have some bacteria, and we're going to get to that in a second. But this is the important part. The rest of the vitamins, any vitamins that have been left behind, any water that has been left behind, and any electrolytes that have been left behind are going to be absorbed or reclaimed at this point. And then fecal material is just going to be um, propelled forward so that we can get rid of our waste. <clears throat> now here's where the bacteria come in. 
So bacteria, we have a lot of bacteria in our colon. Um, and so they colonize in the colon and they're going undergoing mitosis and they're, or excuse me, binary fission, and they're making more bacteria, but the bacteria is necessary. Um, it actually helps us synthesize uh, B complex vitamins and vitamin K. So meaning that it helps us build that up. Um, in the meantime, when it's doing this, it actually causes a gas and we call it flatus or flatulence. And that is basically um, a fart. And so they're the ones that are producing that gas that is going to be released um, at times. So this is what the large intestine looks like. So we have our cecum, and this is where the um, small intestine is going to connect. <clears throat> this is the cecum. Here's your little um, appendix. Then you have your ascending colon. This is your transverse colon, descending colon, your sigmoid colon, and then finally goes into the rectum, anal canal, and then out um, of the body as waste. <clears throat> so in the small intestines, as I've already alluded to, 95% of the water is absorbed and then the rest of the water will be absorbed in um, the large intestines and that's why your fecal matter is solid. Now unfortunately um, throughout the digestive system we can develop cancer. In any of those organs, we can develop cancer. We can have mouth cancer. We can have esophageal cancer, etc. cetera. Um, but stomach cancers and colon cancers are a little bit more um, common than some of the others. But stomach and colon cancers um, rarely have early signs or symptoms. And so by the time you find out that you have it um, without routine checkups, um, it can be already uh, metastasizing or spreading throughout the body. Um, and so just regular medical and dental examinations are very, very uh, necessary for people throughout their life to make sure that we catch it early. Colon cancer is the second largest cause of cancer in, um, deaths in males, and lung cancer would be the first. Now, what colon cancer is, is it's any cancer of the, um, those four parts of the colon, basically your large intestines. And so what they do is, um, as you get older, uh, when you reach age 50, they want you to go in for a colonoscopy. And that is where they um, <clears throat> are going to give you uh, some fluids that are going to clean out your colon. And then they um, stick a camera and they um, go into the rectum. And then they go all throughout your colon so that they can see if there are any um, polyps. Polyps are mucosal tumors. And what happens with these polyps is they can eventually um, turn into colon cancer. And so what they'll do is they'll uh, remove the polyps if, if needed, um, or they'll just take a biopsy, meaning they'll just take a piece of it and then they'll go check it and see if it's um, cancerous. But they definitely do not want you to have these polyps. And so you go in for a colonoscopy. If you don't have any of the polyps or any problems, then you don't, I believe you don't have to go in for another 10 years.